Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, just give us two minutes uh, for Facebook to get this video visible to everyone. And we are live today on Instagram. So just in case you have an account on Instagram and you have people that you would love to um, invite, yes, we are live on Instagram. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, so I'm just gonna share this on your page, Dr. West, just one second. <clears throat> Perfect. So I have it on your page now, Dr. West. Okay, great. Yes. Great. Um, okay. So guys, just give us one second. We're, we're trying to do a lot of things today. Mm -hmm. We're it's trying some new all stuff. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. I got my iPad, I got my phone over here, I got my guys. And today so we're, we're on a roll. Technology. Wherever that you are, we're right here. Good morning, guys. And just say a quick hello. Hello, Morel. Thank you so much for joining. And so, uh, Dr. West, I'm just getting this started on Instagram. Sure. And I'll join and in. I have just started. Okay, I see. Good morning, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning. Yes, we're ready to go now. And so, Jessica, you missed us for a minute. We're back. Okay, uh, Dr. Wars, can you just send me an invite on Instagram? Yeah. And we should have this live. I am excited this morning. Woo! Yes. Hello, Donald Tolson. Thank you so much for being here. I'm just waiting for your invite. And perfect, that's it, got it. Guys, we're ready to go, we're ready to go, we're ready to go. It's a great Monday morning and I am excited to have Dr. West in the house. Yes, hello, Etewo, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So, perfect, welcome Dr. West. Welcome to you too. Yes, it's so good to have you. Thank you. So we're both ways here. So if you have some of your family, your friends and family on Instagram, please let them know that we're live on Instagram. Hello, Roland. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Dr. Tracy. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's a full house this morning and I am so excited. We're going to have a great time here, guys. Welcome to the Civilized Presence. And you are in the right place at the right time. Hello, Kim Shim. Um, Kim Shimel Inspires, thank you so much for being here. My Instagram family has been so great this morning. I have had people jumping in when we're just testing things out. And just give me a thumbs up. If you can hear me on Facebook and on Instagram, give us a thumbs up and a hello. Give us a wave. Uh, just share some love, okay? This is the Civilized Presence. Hello, Jessica. Thank you for coming back on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're excited. Okay, and we're here right on time. So we are not late today because Dr. West is in the house. So welcome everyone. If this is your very first time, we're here every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Yes, Helen, I'm so sorry. Yes, we had to take it out from Instagram for a minute. Hello, Robin, thank you for being here. Hello, Vaughn, thank you for being here. Hello, Kim, thank you so much for being here. Yes, Dr. West is in the house, and so we're just ready to, to have this party. I'm excited. Yes, yeah, so we're here every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern time. If this is your very first time, you're in the right place. And this is called the Civilized Presence. The main focus of this Facebook series is really to help restore civility to meaningful and constructive conversation. So if you feel like I'm not looking at the camera for a minute, it's because I'm just trying to move from two di different devices, okay? But I'm still here with you. What is important is the message, and I don't want you to miss the message today. So we've been doing this from the month of April, really trying to break down the message of civility into meaningful 
and tiny bits, just teaching you how important and easy it is for us to be civil. And you can begin with little things like saying please and thank you, or even saying good morning, or just even share a compliment, just like I'm going to do right now to Dr. West and say, Dr. West, it's so great to have you in the house. Thank you so much. So guys, you were here in the civilized presence. So what I expect you to do really is to say hello to each other. We have to begin right here in the session by being civil. So just say hi to everyone around. It's such a great community. We're always having fun here. Just say hello and check people out and give them a thumbs up and just let them know that you really uh, care about them. So we have a lot that is lined up for today. So I'm not gonna take so much time because this show is for Dr. West. Hello, Terrence. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Sonia. Thank you for being here. So for those of you who have never been civil before, that's okay. You are in the right place, okay? Uh, this is the Civilized Presence, and Civilized Presence is the online TV session, okay, where lives are changed, where people discover their self, their purpose, their voice, and learn social skills required to thrive in the real world and become um, change makers. So if you want to become a change maker, just raise your hand, give us a thumbs up, say hello. Give us a smiley face. Come on, share some love. And you are in the right place. So some of you have never met me. You don't know who I am. I am your girl, Louisa Akaizo, and I am the host for today. I feel so honored that you have responded to the call. That's the post on Facebook, on Instagram, or you found it on your friend's page. Somebody invited you or someone just shared it with you, or you just bumped into this video. Come on, just hang on tight, grab your pen and paper and your cup of coffee. I don't know what part of the world that you're in, but I am in Virginia and it is pretty cold. So you have to have your cup of coffee while you're learning from Dr. West. So I am so excited. Hello, Ubon King. It's so good to have you. That's gonna be our guest for Friday. Thank you so much for being here. It's so good to have you. So guys, I just wanna encourage all of you to hang on tight and just thank you for being here from Lagos, Nigeria. It's so good to have you. So back to me again, I am a certified master civility trainer and a leadership speaker, coach and trainer with the John Maxwell team. I work confidently with leaders and professionals that place great importance in themselves and their reputation. And I know that's gonna be you this morning because you made out time to be here. I am truly honored and humbled to serve the world with my gift and you just being here encourages me to do even more. So I just wanna join hands with all of you and work tirelessly to create a civil society. We can do this all together. I cannot do it on my own. If you join hands with me, we can do it and it's just gonna be so easy. So guys, I am so excited. We have a special guest in the house. Dr. West is in the house. I can hardly sit still. Let me tell you, I, it's one of those moments when I just wanna scream and just shout and do my African dance. But listen, if I do that, everything is gonna be disconnected. But I want Dr. West to know that we really appreciate him and we are just looking forward to learning from the very best. So if you're just joining us for the very first time, we bring only the best on the show. So you cannot miss this show. Um, now we have some of our videos or all of our videos on um, YouTube. So all you have to do is just to follow me on YouTube, okay? And you would have access to those videos. So share this, um, invite your friends and family, your neighbors, your loved ones, everyone to be part of what we're doing today. Now you are asking, who is Dr. West? Okay, I'm just gonna give a minute for Dr. West to say hello to the audience. Dr. West, just go ahead and say hello. Hey, I wanna say hello to everyone who took the time to be here today. You're in the right place at the right time. This is not a coincidence. Coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. So this was meant for you and thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Dr. West. Thank you so much. And hi, Instagram family. I love you guys. Uh, come back in. I know we're testing our system. We've tried this like three times before I got it right, but we never ever give up. And that's why we got it right this morning. So come on in, come on in and just join us and just say hello. And our Facebook family, it's so good to have you here. So let me tell you a bit about Dr. West and why he is so special to me. So Dr. West is a certified professional. He is a 
success um, a coach. He is a speaker. He's an expert corporate trainer, a published author, and a vision breakthrough expert. He is also the founder of the Black Belt Speakers. If you saw the post, you would have seen uh, the logo right there and you want to check them out online. And this is an organization that offers a training program that allows its participants the ability to achieve mastery. He has been mentored directly by the world renowned um, motivational speaker, Les Brown, and is also a Golden Rule Ambassador. So welcome. Thank Dr. You. West, I am so excited to have you in the house. Hello, Cheryl. Hello, Diamond. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Dr. Branch. And for those of you who I haven't mentioned your name, I just want to let you know that I love you very much. Um, but it's just that we have so many people just jumping in and I, and I love you. But we have to get back to what we have for today. Yes, the best speaker training program on the planet. I believe that. That is it. If you want to be a great and world-class speaker, you have to be part of the Black Belt Speakers. Right after this program, and I'm gonna leave, can someone just help me leave the um, link in the comment box below? Uh, so if you wanna reach out to them and, and if you want a special discount, yes, talk to me, but <laughs> reach out to them. Dr. West is on Facebook, he's on Instagram, you can follow him everywhere. And you can even send an email or just get on their website and be part of what they are doing. So, Dr. West, I am excited this morning, and I know that you are excited too. Now, before we get started, the first thing is really to share with everyone the definition of civility. And this morning, I have chosen one from Dr. Forney. Yes. Dr. Forney is the father of civility, and I, I'm just, I just have to honor him so much this morning. And it states that being civil means being constantly aware of others and weaving restraint, respect, and consideration into the very fabric of this awareness. So civility is a form of goodness. It is gracious goodness. Civility begins with us. It is about you being responsible for your actions. So my very first question for you today, Dr. West, would be, what does civility mean to you? And how can you explain this concept of civility to a layman? Over to you, Dr. West. Sure. So, so first of all, let me tell you that I found great value in that definition that you just shared. That was great. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have you send that to me when we get That's off good. the show. That was a great definition. But I Thank think you. to break civility down, simply put, is, is treating people the way that God wanted them to be treated. Now, mm. a lot of times, watch this, a lot of times we say civility is treating people the way you want to be treated. But the problem is because a lot of things have happened to us in our lives, a lot of experiences that we've been through, a lot of things that we've encountered, we don't feel oftentimes that we deserve the best treatment. So if I don't feel like I deserve the best treatment and I don't feel like people should treat me with respect and I don't feel like people should honor me, and then you tell me to treat them the way I, I want to be treated, then that means I don't have to treat them that way. So I'm going to switch the whole script. I'm not going to say it's treating people the way you want to be treated. Maybe that's it. But what I'm going to say is I think it's treating people the way God wanted me, them to be treated. And he made us in it after his own likeness and his own image. And so to me, that's the simple layman's definition of civility, treating people the way God wanted them to be treated. And we all know that he put a gift inside of each and every one of us that he wants us to bring to the world. And he wants each one of us to help other people bring their gift to the world. Thank you so much, Dr. West. That is powerful, treating people the way God wants them to be treated. Now that statement is so loaded. So you, you have to figure out what God wants, first right. of all. <laughs> that, right. that statement is loaded, guys. It's so that, that, that shows that you have to be committed to the cause. Yeah. It's not something you're just going to walk by and do it like you want it, but you have to apply your heart to it. You have to mean everything that you do. When you say please and thank you, you have to mean it. When mm -hmm. you ask somebody how you're doing, you're really going to purse and find out how they are doing. Okay, guys. So, oh, Dr. West, that definition 
You know, there is no place to hide, guys. This is the civilized person. There's no gray areas. And now Dr. West has shared another definition that I am going to stand and leave by the way God wanted them to be treated. I think that's the most powerful definition. Thank you so much, Dr. West. I have another question for you, Dr. West. There are so many great things about you. Now, from your experience in the medical field, what analogy can you use to illustrate what civility means? Over to you, Dr. West. Yeah. So first of all, uh, let me expand on what I said when I said that it's treating people the way God wanted them to be treated. And so we have to break down then the definition of God. And I'm going to use his definition. God is love. And so it's treating people with a level of love, agape love, love just because, not because they have to earn the love, not because they have to do something. It's not a, a, a romantic love. It is a true, deep understanding and appreciation for the fact that they have a gift that he put in them to bring to this earth and they may not know it. And through the way we treat them and the way we build them, we can help them bring that out. Now, you said for me to kind of elaborate on this part of it, in my book, Destination Mastery, I talk about the mental immune system and the success immune system and the viral success system. But let me help you understand that just with this analogy. Let's say you, you needed an organ transplant. Well, the first thing they would do is they would go through and they would do a donor match because they wanted to know that the organ that was given to you would work for you. And once they did all the matching and the type and screening and the type and cross, then you would go through the procedure. Now this happens for people every day. There's people on donor lists and they're, they're waiting to be matched up with a donor that can watch this, help them live. Now in the world, throughout the world, there's people that are living with incivility. And you know what they're looking for? They're looking for a donor match. They're looking for somebody that can bring civility into their life, into their world, watch this, into their country. And so they're going through looking, will this person be able to bring it in? Will that person be able to bring it in? And then they finally find someone that brings it in. This is not a new concept. We try and take we try and take civility all over the world. And so we go into different countries and we tell them how they should live civil and how we should treat them and they should treat us. But just like the, the organ transplant, a lot of times once the organ is transplanted, the body, because of the way it's made, it's only designed to detect, is this me or is it not me? In other words, the cell looks for, is it self or not? And so once a cell finds another cell that's not like them, it attacks them. It's automatic. But your body's immune system is designed to attack foreign cells. But what happened when that foreign tissue or that foreign cell was something you needed to live? It was the kidney that was transplanted to you so that you would live. It was the heart that was given to you so that you would live, even though you need this heart because the body says, wait a minute, this is not me. It has the potential to attack it. Well, the exact same thing happens when we take stability to another land or to another group or to another community. Even though it's what is needed, even though it's what's needed to help us live a healthier life or a healthier way, then it can also oftentimes be rejected even the people who are trying to take this ability. And I believe that's because deep down intrinsically, we don't believe they're us. See, when we say treat people like the way you wanna be treated, it's, it's not the way somebody else has determined that you should be treated, is if you really understand the value God placed in you, how do you deserve to be treated? And that's how you wanna treat other people. So the issue that we face with civility is a lot of times, we don't know enough about the other person and understand them intrinsically and them understanding us reciprocal police so that the treatment is fair and balanced and that we can appreciate them as an individual. Thank you so much, Dr. West. Uh, we have a lot of people jumping on. And I'm just going to take a minute and just say hello to our Instagram audience. Hello, Glorious Prestries. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Gladiator Speaks. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Christine. Kosier, thank you so much for being here. Hello, Gwen, thank you so much for being here. Um, and I can see a lot more people, I'm sorry. I don't wanna take the screen down, but if I missed you, I wanna say that I love you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you, I really appreciate you. And this is the Civilized Presence. This is what we do every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So if you got here late, that's okay. You're gonna have access 
to this video right on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. So you find, but hang on tight and bring on your questions because we have Dr. West in the house, dropping the hot nuggets. So you don't wanna miss it in real time. Thank you. So Dr. West, over to you. I have another question for you. So based on the topic of the day, why civility may seem foreign, okay? The concept of civility is new to some, and even though its practice has been ongoing from the beginning of time. I mean, my parents used to call it common sense, but when I grew up, I realized I had to get trained and certified to teach people how to have common sense. So what in your own view do you think uh, makes this concept seem foreign to some people? Over to you, Dr. West. Well, honestly, what makes it seem foreign is even though it seems like common sense, there's a new narrative that is- Losing you for a minute. We're losing you? Okay, you're back now. Perfect. There is a new narrative that's oftentimes put forth and that concept is every man for themselves, that you better get what you can get and you better get it while you can get it. And so because of that, and because people are taught that from the beginning, now civility seems foreign. Me looking out for you, that's foreign to, to me. Me coming to you to see what we could do together, that's foreign. Me working with you and not trying to see what I can get from you or what I can take from you, for a lot of people that's foreign. As a matter of fact, Lisa, let me tell you this. I was talking to my business partner, Kevin Wilson, and he said something to me one time that really illuminated some of the issues that we have faced in business. And we've been in business together 20 plus years in multiple businesses. And he said, Ruben, do you realize that every problem we've ever had in business with other people is when we made the mistake of thinking that they thought like we thought and they didn't? that they would treat us like we treated them and they didn't, that they would respect us like we respected them and they didn't. So here's what happens. Depending on the way you're raised or taught or indoctrinated to doing business, to treating other people, to living civilly, that, that determines how you treat other people. Now, when you go and treat them that way, you don't necessarily know that they were taught the same way. And so now that's where the disconnect comes in. And, and that's one thing. Number two, even if they never taught us how to treat another person, we are given little bits of incivility by the way we're taught about other people. So, and that's done through over generalizations. And they say, these people are like this. And if you go over there, those people are like that. And they're generalizing the whole group of people when they have only had an experience with a handful of people. The problem is, they're teaching people that and the people believe it. And so let, let's be honest, when we look at the news and we, for instance, here in America, hear the word Muslim, for a lot of people that brings up insecurity, that brings, brings up anxiety. I remember being in, in Dubai and I was at the cultural center and it was interesting because they had a sign up there and the sign said, open doors, open minds. In other words, if we open the doors to the country and let them come in and see for themselves, it can open them up to a whole new perspective of what it means to be associated with a Muslim. Now, the reason that was important is because a lot of times people in charge want to tell you what you should think about them. And they want to tell you how they are and what they're like. And if you don't know any different, you believe it. And so now when you meet, meet someone who says they're Muslim, you automatically put up this wall, you automatically put up this defense you automatically, unconsciously act in incivil ways, small acts of incivility. And it's all because of the way you were brought up, trained, and indoctrinated. And so I do believe that open doors, open minds, but also open relationships, open minds. And we have to get to know people as individuals, not as a general culture or a general group. Thank you so much, Dr. West. Thank you. Uh, we have Jeeva from Malaysia. Thank you so Thank much you so for joining us. I'm so I'm sorry, sorry. Gladiator speaks. Uh, he uh, says he has some echo. Dr. West, can you check um, on your end uh, from Instagram? They're experiencing an echo when you speak. Uh, someone just left that comment. Um, Instagram, I'm so sorry that this is happening. It's my very first time, so I'm a newbie on Instagram. So forgive me if it doesn't work out quite great today, but I will make sure that the next time 
it's going to be a great experience. Okay. And if you're on Facebook, uh, please follow me on my business page is so unique experts and you would have the best quality video uh, waiting for you right there. Okay. But we're going to try to make this look a lot greater and better on Instagram the next time. I'm going to try again. It's my very first time on Instagram uh, doing the live for this long. So I'm, I'm happy and ready to learn and share some tips. If there's something I'm not doing right, I am always open to learn. Thank you so much. And I can see some more people jumping on. And guys, do us a favor. Can you please just share this video on your page? Share it on your page. Share it on your group. Invite your friends and family. If there's somebody sleeping, wake them up. Dr. West is in the house. They can't be sleeping. Okay. <laughs> and just get everyone to be part of this. And if you have any questions, okay. So Terrence says, I can only hear echo on your end, Louisa. Okay, Terrence, I'm going to work on it. I'm so sorry. I'm going to work on it. So if you do experience anything that is not working out this morning, I'm so sorry that this is happening. Sometimes the network and the system is not so friendly, but the message is great. So just hang on tight and be here with me and it's going to work out pretty soon. Okay. All right. So Dr. West, we're going back to the next question now. Um, another question I have for you is what are the steps that uh, you think uh, civility practitioners uh, should take to assimilate the concept of civility? Over to you, Dr. West. Sure. And I'm going to, you know, like you said, we're really running on two systems. We're running on the Facebook system, which I'm looking at right now. And then we're running on the Instagram system, which I'm, which I'm looking at right now. And so you'll see me switch my gaze back and forth because I want everyone to feel this on a heart level. I want everybody to understand this on the heart level. And so the question is, what should the practitioners do to instill civility? Mm -hmm. And and so first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to give you some, some standard te te practices. I mean, they probably already understand these. I know the people on Instagram understand that if you're going to disagree with somebody, you have to disagree respectfully. You have to understand that they have the right to disagree. They have the right to a different opinion but you have to do it in a respectful way. Now, I'm gonna tell them that they have to do something like think before they speak. That a lot of times we can speak out of emotion. Listen to this and, and somebody put this in the feed. When emotion is high, logic is low. Listen to that. When emotion is high, logic is low. And so if you've ever been in a highly emotional situation, boom, you fire off something at somebody and then later on you realize, man, I, I don't know if I should have said that. You know why? Because when emotion is high, logic is low. So what do you? how do you handle that? Well, you have to do your best to remain in emotional control. Mm. So even when you're not agreeing, you have to do your best to remain in emotional control. Because listen to this, just because they're disagreeing with your information doesn't mean they disagree with you. In mm. other words, just because they have a problem with your information doesn't mean they have a problem with you. You just disagree with the information. Now, where we usually get emotionally frustrated is when we feel like we have a they have a problem with us right mm -hmm. and so you're going to be in a group of people and you have to talk in a way that sends respect to every person in the room as a matter of fact george washington in his publication rules of civility and decent behavior in company and conversations he offered us a suggestion and he said that every action done in company ought to be with some sign of respect for everyone to those that are present and so that's coming from one of our former presidents. Mm -hmm. Now, all of those things make sense. We have to respectfully uh, disagree, um, all those things. But, but let me tell you something that I feel will help it even better, is that we have to be able to have a deeper understanding and appreciation for other people. And we have to feel like we're connected in a way. Now, let me give you an example. I have children. And sometimes they do things that are wrong. And, and sometimes I have to correct them, but I always do it out of love. Because in the end, I feel like they're a part of me. They're my children. It's my responsibility. See, when we understand people at a deep and intrinsic level, we feel like we're a part of them and they're a part of us. And even mm -hmm. if we correct them, we correct them out of love. Mm -hmm. And we maintain that level of respect. And so what we have to do is we have to focus on the greater good, focus on the common good, as opposed to our individual agendas. That's another reason why, you know, we get 
kind of crossways at times because a lot of times as civility trainers or civility experts or just people who want to make a difference, we have an agenda. See, not knowing that they have an agenda too. Mm-hmm. And so what we have to do is focus on what is the greater good? What is the, the big picture? Not just what I want, but what do I want in conjunction to what they want? And I think if we add those things into the mix, you know, think before we speak, say something that is respectful to everyone in the room, disagree respectfully, keep our emotions under emotional control. Mm-hmm. And I think those things would really help elevate the ability to communicate and for people to listen on a deeper level. Thank you so much, Dr. West. I I just um, want to share share a definition that I found found from the Institute uh, for Civility in Government for Civility. I thought that was great. And this connects to what you just shared. It says civility is claiming and caring for one's identity, needs, and beliefs without degrading someone else's in the process. Right. I right. thought that 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 That's is true. great. You can think about protecting yourself, but don't try to degrade somebody else because you do not know where they're coming from. You do not know their background. You do not know their history. You do not know their experiences. And and they will also think that they are right. So mm-hmm. I totally agree with you, Dr. West. And, and this leads us to the next question. Um, and, you know, Dr. Clyde Rivers has a great book uh, when histories collide. Yes. Now, how do we handle civility across borders? Because I know that you do a lot of work across the world uh, with Golden Rule and civility. How do we handle this uh, when we move on to all the cultures? Over to you, Dr. West. So number one, that is a great book, When Histories Collide. It's on Amazon. It's a quick read. It's a step-by-step process to communicate even though we have different backgrounds. So let me just illuminate that for a second when he says when histories collide we all have a unique presence that we come from we have mm-hmm. things that have happened in our past that make us who we are now the good news is everybody has that the bad news is oftentimes it's different than our experience so when we come together and i'm talking from my history it's true to me it's my history but when you're talking from your history it's true to you it's your history I call that autobiographical pseudo truth. In other words, autobiographical to me, pseudo false truth. So it's not universally true. It's not a universal principle like gravity. Gravity is true for everybody on the earth. If you don't believe me, jump off a building, fall out of a tree, you'll find out. But history is only true to you. And so when you talk to someone else, they're arguing from a viewpoint of their history. You're arguing from a viewpoint of your history. And guess what? Both individuals are right. But the problem is now they're colliding because they're saying, hey, listen, this is what happened to me. And you're saying this is what happened to me. It's true. The question is, how do you find common ground? Remember, I said it's not about your own personal agenda, but rather for the greater good. So now you have to look at what is the common ground that we can have in a unique history that's part yours, part mine, but a move ahead strategy. Because watch this. We can never change the past. I can never change your history. You can never change my history. I can never not be from Topeka, Kansas. No matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, I will always be from Topeka, Kansas. No matter how long I live in another city, I will always be from the Topeka, Kansas. You'll always be from where you are. So what we know is that we can't change the past, but what we can change is what the future can look like. And so what we really do when we're working with other nations is say, hey, this is what the past is, and we can't change that. And and I appreciate your past, and it's true to you. And I want you to appreciate my past, and it's true to me. But how can we come together to create a future that is not detrimental to you or me, and that takes into account the things that we've experienced in the past? Now, why is that important? Because you can't throw out the past. So you can't, the past is evidence and you just can't throw out the evidence. But what you can is do is you can build on new evidence. So there's things that's happened in people's past that's hurt them. And sometimes just as an individual, it takes them a while to get over because they got to build that trust up again. We have to be willing to go, go do that in other nations. When they realize that things have happened in the past that have caught, caused them not to trust in the past, we can't just walk in there and say, hey, get over that. That's the past. No, no. What we can say is we acknowledge what's happened in the past 
and we will work to show you a different view in the future. And we're not asking you to just believe us today. We're asking you to give us a chance today to prove to you we are who we say we are now and we're not who they were in the past. Thank you so much, Dr. West. I have another question because uh, I have a few systems here. Hello, TC Cooper. It's so good to have you in the house. So it says, considering this is a broad, multicultural, diverse audience we have on the show right now, how can they come to the understanding that civility is treating people the way God wants them to be treated? Thank you so much, Dee. Thank you. Please, can you leave the comments in the box below so that everyone can see, but I really do appreciate your question. Uh, Dr. West, do you want me to read that back to you again? No, no, I have Okay, got it, okay. So her question, if I could sum it up, was how can we come to that understanding collectively? There's a lot of different people on the, on the line. There's a lot of different people with different backgrounds and watch this, different understandings and belief to what God is, mm. right? But what we can find in every, even if we took it in a religious perspective, Every single religion has a golden rule respect uh, perspective, which is treating people with civility, treating people the way that you want to be treated, that kind of format. Every religion, every single one of them, you can find them in every single religious text. Now, why is that important? That makes it a universal principle. It makes it a universal law. What we have to do then is look at how should we want to be treated? See, because once you understand from a universal perspective that you are a gift from God, right? And we've heard that, that life is a gift from God and how we live our life or what we do in our life is our gift back to God. But, but the best thing we could do is honor the gift. My son just had a birthday. He just turned seven. And one of the things he wanted for his birthday was an Xbox. And so I wasn't going to buy an Xbox for a seven-year-old. So I made him work for it. So he created a book. He sold his books. He got the money. He bought the Xbox. But what I told him is, but well, we got to treat it a certain way. This is still a gift, even if it's a gift from you to you. So we have to put it up. We have to take care of it. We have to protect it. We have to make sure it's okay. We have to do all this stuff. Why? Because it's a gift. If somebody gave you a gift, you have to respect the gift. You have to take care of it. Wait a minute. If God gave us the gift of life and also gave it to other people, we're responsible for respecting it. So our universal perspective comes in when we understand that each person has been given a gift. Now, let me prove this to you. You understand that every change that's come about on the earth came from an idea or concept that somebody brought forward. If we were going to go to the moon, somebody had that idea. If we were going to get cell phones, somebody had that idea. If we were gonna have houses, if we were gonna have buildings, skyscrapers, dump mm -hmm. trucks, somebody came up with that idea. So God changes the world through ideas that he gives through people. Louisa had an idea for a show to help bring civility to the world. Now, what we have to do as participants on the show or listeners to the show is understand that in any great change, we can either be the rock or we can be the ripple. Let's say that again, you could be the rock or you could be the ripple. Larissa is the rock. She's the thing falling in the water. But you know what? All of us are creating the ripple. We're sharing the words out. We're spreading the message. We're chiming in. We're tuning in. And so in your life, you have the opportunity to do the exact same thing. And you've got to make up your mind. Are you going to be the rock or are you going to be the ripple? Now watch this. Watch this. Some people are going to choose to be the dam. You know what the dam does? It stops the ripple from going. Once the ripple hits the dam, it rejects it. Boom. It hits it and it bounces back. And so I'm, not, I'm asking you, hey, don't be the dam. You can be the rock or you can be the ripple. But through our work, we can spread civility throughout the world. Thank you so much, Dr. West. Thank you. Uh, we have some more people that are jumping on. Hello, Cheryl. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Esther from Nigeria. Thank you for being here. Hello, Charles uh, from Ghana. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Tracy. It's so good to have you in the house. Hello, Christine. Thank you for being here. Yes, we have a lot of comments and I appreciate you guys. Yes, hello, Makem. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. My Instagram family, it's so good to 
uh, see you guys this morning. It's our very first time, but we are here every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So do keep that time and always make sure that you log on online and you will find us online at 8 a.m. Eastern time, sharing some great nuggets on how you can become civil. If you've never been civil before, that's okay. Like I said, you can begin today right after the show. It's not too late. There's always so many tips. If you haven't uh, listened to the session yet, you can go back to the replay. I'm so sorry if it seems like I'm not looking at the camera. It's because I have to be going to different sessions, okay? But bear with me. What is important is the message, and the message is so good. Yes, Gwen, the message is damn good. Yep, yep, I understand. Yes, thank you so much, T.C. Cooper. Thank you. Dr. West, what can I say? Hello, look at my friend. He's an act of civility. He's on his way to school. How are you? you? Got to come down and give me a hug. Great. Oh, that is so cool. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Oh, this look is at one that. of his new guests for his birthday, so he wanted to show that up. So. Oh, I wish you can leave that for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank I you. just want to point out something, Louisa. Yes. See, we can start with a new generation and teach them civility. That when you walk in, you speak, you acknowledge people, that you say good morning, that you welcome them. Not as a, not as just something to do, but that you truly value what mm. that person has to say, their experience, and the fact that you know. See, what I know about my son is there is a gift from God in there. And it's my responsibility mm. to help bring that out in him. And so when I teach him that, he can teach that to other people. He can share it with other people. So I just wanted to point that out, that we teach that civility. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. West has left so much great nuggets. And I want to say thank you so much for making our time uh, to be here. And guys, I just want to say that you do have a gift. Or if you do not think that you had one, you do. Everyone that God created is a person of value. Now, what I want you to do beginning from today is ask yourself this great question. How can I make the world a better place? How can I use my gift to impact people? What can I do with it? Now, listen, don't just rush out of your bed in the morning. Spend some quiet time and really think about how you can use your gift. Use the gift that you've been given. Okay, don't bother about all of the titles and all of that and all the noise, that's not important. But use your gift to add value to people. Use your gift to be a change maker. Be the change that you wanna see in the world. And if you're just joining us at this hour, I'm so sorry, I have to be civil and let Dr. West go right on time. I told him 30 minutes, we're a little over that. So you will have access to this video right on Instagram and on Facebook or also on YouTube. Uh, follow me on Luisa Kaiso. I will be right there on YouTube and you can watch this video. And if you do have any questions, uh, thank you so much for those who are leaving us questions, but I have to let Dr. Uh, West go. Okay, guys, he's going to come back again if I let him go on time. <laughs> so, <laughs> Serve your gift to the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Donald Tolson, it's so good to have you. Thank you, C. Kearney. It's so good to have you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, T.C. Cooper, for all of your contributions. Thank you, Morel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And we are back here again on Friday, same time, 8 a.m. Eastern time. And we would have another great expert to come and share it with us. Now, guys, if you did not get a chance to hear about uh, Dr. West's book, he has quite a few of them, but I read this one that is so powerful. Listen, you can get it on Kindle. Don't even wait for the hard copy. Just get it on Kindle because as soon as I saw the book, I couldn't wait. I had just grab it straight on Kindle and it's called Destination Mastery. He has other ones. And please leave the comment for us. Uh, Tracy, can you leave the um, link in the comment box below for the books and the link for the Black Belt Speakers? and how we can reach Dr. West, he's very busy. So just send him a message and he will get back to you. Uh, so if you wanna be part of what he's doing, he's such a great guy, he, he, he will reach out to you. So just leave him a message. He is on Facebook, he's on Instagram, he's on LinkedIn, he's on Twitter, he is everywhere. So just try to connect with him and make sure that you're here again on Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern time. 
Thank you so much, Terrence. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for all the great comments. Uh, you make this all happen. And I really appreciate you for hanging on tight with me. And see you again on Friday, same time, 8 a.m. Eastern time. Bye for now. Bye, everyone.